Hey guys, it's Michael. Welcome back to Michael in the Morning. Today is Tuesday, August 13th, 2020, and we have a lot of important information to cover with the second stimulus check and second stimulus package, as well as the specific timeline on the $300 per week or $400 per week enhanced unemployment benefits. So in today's video, we're first gonna go over how the US reported its highest single day virus death toll of the month and since mid-May. Then we're gonna get into how President Donald Trump on Wednesday unveiled six new recommendations for schools that reopen this fall. And this caused a lot of controversy between parents, teachers, and students. Then we're gonna get into heated debates between Nancy Pelosi and Steven Mnuchin that took place yesterday on the second stimulus package. They proposed some compromises to reach an agreement and they explained what it will take for us to see a second stimulus package soon. And finally, we're gonna go over the time timeline for when you should expect to receive the $300 per week or $400 per week enhanced unemployment benefits and who is actually eligible for these payments. But before we get started, it would really mean a lot to me if you could like the video down below and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on the stimulus check and stimulus package as well as other news updates. Also, don't forget, you can get two free stocks valued up to $1,400 when you download the Weevil investing app using the link down below. Let me know in the comments which stocks you get. Also, you can get $5 immediately when you download the Acorns investment app as well. So the U.S. reported its highest single day virus death toll of the month yesterday on Wednesday. Officials across the United States reported more than 1,470 deaths yesterday, the highest single day total yet in August, according to the New York Times database. This total was the highest since mid-May, which signals that America does not have the pandemic under control yet, despite stabilizing case numbers. The deaths reported on Wednesday were concentrated largely in the Sun Belt states that saw the most dramatic case spikes in June and July. So even as case numbers have started to drop in some of those particular areas and some of those particular states, deaths have remained persistently high. So they're saying we have to keep an eye out for this because even though cases may decrease, if deaths are still remaining the same or increasing, well then that is a sign that we don't have the virus under control. Yet yeah. next up is President Trump on Wednesday unveiled six new recommendations for schools that reopened this fall. And this caused a lot of controversy between educators and parents. Two of these recommendations were encouraging widespread use of face masks and minimizing large indoor gatherings. He explained that we cannot indefinitely stop 50 million American children from going to school and harming their mental, physical, emotional, and academic development, which will inflict long-term and lasting damage. He said that's not something they want to do. He said all families should be empowered and should have the choice to make the decision that is right for their own circumstances on whether or not they want to send their children to school. And he explains that this is especially important if a children has underlying health conditions or lives with a parent or grandparent who is high at risk. However, while Trump says that families should be able to make their own decisions on whether or not to send their children to school, teachers say that they don't want to go back until it is safe. So this caused a lot of controversy yesterday with thousands of teachers all across the country having protests saying that they don't want to go to school until it's safe for them because even if parents feel comfortable sending kids to school, the teachers may not feel comfortable teaching at these schools. And finally, he did announce though that 125 million reusable masks would be provided to schools across the country to help with CDC and safety measures. Next up is House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. They clashed after speaking on the phone Wednesday about stalled virus relief bills. A statement from Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader said yesterday that Steven Mnuchin reiterated the White House is not budging from their position concerning the size and scope of the legislative package and how they only want to pass a $1 trillion deal. Pelosi and Schumer said that they have repeatedly made clear that they are willing to come down $1 trillion. Nancy Pelosi originally proposed a $3 trillion bill, but she says she's willing to go down to $2 trillion if the Republicans come up $1 trillion. Republicans initially proposed a $1 trillion bill with the Heels Act. So she said if they can meet in the middle at $2 trillion, 
she'd be happy to come back to the table and finish negotiations. However, unfortunately, Nancy Pelosi explained, until Republicans are willing to meet in the middle at the $2 trillion number, there's no use in sitting in a room and starting to debate when nothing is going to work out. Pelosi said yesterday on MSNBC that the Democratic leaders and White House officials remain miles apart, citing in particular a stalemate over education funding, eviction protections, and additional money for food stamps. But the good news is, as she says, as a practical matter, the Republicans are going to have to come back to the negotiating table, and she believes they're going to have to come up to that $2 trillion. On the other side of this issue with Republicans and the White House administration, Steven Mnuchin fired back on Wednesday evening saying that Nancy Pelosi was falsely accusing him. He said that earlier today, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and he spoke on the phone and her statement was not accurate of their conversation. He explains that she made it clear that she was unwilling to meet and continue negotiations unless they agreed in advance to a $2 trillion proposal. He said that he's not to blame for the breakdown in talks right now because the administration, he said, is willing to move forward with a stimulus package today that allows for substantial funds for schools, childcare, food vaccines, hospitals, PPP for small business, direct stimulus checks, and other aspects as well. But Democrats don't want to pass it because they only want to do a deal that is at least $2 trillion. Steven Mnuchin says they can include all the aspects that they want and that they've agreed on in a much smaller bill without wasting money. But he explained how Democrats only are willing to do a deal if it's at least two trillion dollars. So I'll keep you updated there. But what is known is that both sides want to come to an agreement. They want to get direct stimulus checks out, get the $1,200 payments, and they agree on a number of aspects right now. There are still a number of issues with state and local government funding that they do not agree on and the overall size of the package. And then finally, let's get into the timeline for when you should expect to receive the $300 per week or $400 per week enhanced unemployment benefits and who will be eligible. So under President Trump's executive actions that he passed on Saturday, he said that unemployed individuals would get an additional $400 per week in unemployment benefits and that required that states paid $100 and $300 came from the federal government. So because of this, many people will only be receiving $300 per week because states cannot afford to pay $100 per week. According to the Labor Department, states should be able to begin delivering the $300 per week payments after applying for funding from the Federal Emergency Management Agency and making technical changes to their systems to actually be able to distribute the money. According to the Labor Department, they said that the process should take a couple of weeks to implement so we could see it as early as the end of next week. And they said some states, they go on to explain how some states are going to have to implement an entirely new system and set up a new system so it could take a little longer. But the earliest people can expect to receive these payments added on to their unemployment benefits from their state would be the end of next week. Workers receiving at least $100 a week in unemployment benefits through their state programs would be eligible to receive this boost of $300 per week. And this includes people who are gig economy workers, people who are unemployed and laid off. So anyone who receives $100 in unemployment benefits from the state will be able to receive this additional $300 and you won't have to do anything in addition to that. All you have to do is wait until your state applies for these funds and has the system in place. Anyways, that is just a quick update on what is going on on Thursday, August 13th, 2020 with the second stimulus check and second stimulus package. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to get your two free stocks valued up to $1,400 when you download the Webull investing app using the link down below and get $5 immediately when you download the Acorns investment app. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like the video down below, leave a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.